Babel 17 is a strange one, which is maybe not a surprise coming from Samuel R. Delaney. It's in his run of early novels that I've read along with Nova and Einstein Intersection. And Babel 17 is as confusing as both, maybe a little more confusing than Nova, uh, but is also a bizarro space opera, cyberpunk-ish. It never is called cyberpunk, but it reads as cyberpunk to me. It spans a lot of science fiction tropes, transhumanism, space opera, intergalactic war, but most primarily it's a book about language and linguistics and it's a meditation on something called the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis, which is not something that I particularly understand, but I think the general idea is that language is not descriptive exclusively. It is also uh, something that defines your perception of reality and therefore your reality and the things that you are able to perceive and think about. Uh, and the main character is a linguist who is recruited by a military to help uh, as a code breaker uh, in this intergalactic war where they've intercepted this code. They think it's a code called Babel 17. The linguist figures out pretty quickly that it's not a code, it's actually its own language. And as she uh, learns the language, it alters her cognitive abilities. And she is potentially psychic and goes out on this jaunt, uh, important word, to find the heart of Babel 17 and unravel the mystery along with a ragtag crew of transhuman weirdos on this spaceship, three of whom are dead, one of whom is a giant 10 foot tall uh, tiger or lion, a guy named Brass who's surgically modified to have claws and fangs. And um, that is the tip of the iceberg in terms of the weirdness. It has that signature Samuel Delaney disorientation effect. I think it's his most famous book along with Dahlgren. It's a little bit of a surprise that it's still read as widely as it is because it's uh, high strangeness, we'll say. It's not something that I think most casual science fiction readers would enjoy reading. I liked it, I appreciated it. I think it's my favorite of the Delaney novels that I've read. I do recall finding it sophisticated and cool and compelling and uh, very much like Stars by Destination, which is why I said the jaunt thing. It just, oopsie, has a very similar feeling. The next one is The Doomed City by Boris and Arkady Strugatsky, which is at the top of everybody's TBR. This is a seminal classic. It really is a seminal classic, and it's a forgotten one, I think largely because of the fact that it wasn't translated into English until like 24, uh, 2015, I think. It took a long time. It was written in the mid-70s in the USSR. They were the most popular science fiction authors and two of the most popular authors, period, in the Soviet Union and were read religiously. The Doomed City was dangerous enough that they had to wait until Perestroika began in 1989 to publish it for the first time. It's about this place that might be on an alien planet, might be another dimension, might be somewhere that's artificially constructed on Earth, where people volunteer to go live in what's called the Experiment, with a capital E. People from all over the world and for multiple decades in the 20th century get taken to this place where they live in this lottery system where their work is assigned to them at random um, in order to defeat personal ambition. And then um, there are big sweeping social and political changes that happen in this place that feels and looks kind of like an Eastern Bloc country. Things don't really work properly. There's all kinds of chaotic uh, occurrences that uh, crop up and the main character whose name is Andre is an astronomer and begins the novel as a garbage collector among a, a group of garbage collectors who remain his friends and remain recurring characters throughout the book and he undergoes a major personality change and change in values that I won't say anything more about for want of spoiling it. The novel is a slow build towards this really interesting conclusion that looks and feels really different from the rest of the preceding text, uh, where it, most of the book is Andre kind of going through the paces of different jobs, and then it ends in this odyssey through this desert wasteland, this like post-apocalyptic world. It is slow. I think it's another one that is going to be a little bit of a tough pitch for uh, you maybe, if you just want like an entertaining read, this isn't it. This is a really serious piece of lit. I like really serious pieces of lit that grapple with big ideas. 
the novel, to my mind, is about the, uh, the ideological scene between state communism and fascism and about the spiritual disappointments of both. And how does one live a life in the absence of ideological convictions that are meaningful? And the answer that it furnishes to that question is absolutely beautiful. It's long, grim, flinty. It feels very much like Kafka. But this is among, I think, the most underrated science fiction novels that I've read. Next up is Voyage of the Space Beagle by A.E. Van Vogt, a really important, historically important space opera from the pulp era. By the way, I have long form videos for each of these books and for each book that I read on my Patreon. It's five bucks. You get my full thoughts, full details, and uh, you get them right after I finish reading the book so they're more fresh. It's a fix-up novel published in the early 60s. Um, the stories were originally written in like 1939 to 1950 and was pretty influential, I think, certainly on Star Trek and also famously influential on the movie Alien. As a novel, it kind of barely hangs together. It was certainly better than E.E. E. Doc Smith, one of his contemporaries who also wrote this pulpy space opera uh, that sucks. I really don't like that stuff. Um, Space Beagle was much more mature, we'll say. Um, I didn't really love it. I found it dated and a little boring. I know dated is like a slur. Sorry, it is kind of dated. It's about this ship staffed by scientists exploring the galaxy on their way to the Andromeda galaxy on mankind's first intergalactic voyage. They encounter a bunch of baddies, a um, bunch of aliens that all for the most part, want to kill them, and they have to use their science powers to defeat the aliens. It leans heavily in all the stories on a couple of ideas. One of them is this fictitious science called nexialism that's um, an interdisciplinary science, a meta-science, that can interpret the results of discrete sciences and synthesize them into a bigger, more holistic picture that provides magical insights into what to do and hand, how to handle certain contingencies. And also, this notion of a cyclical model of history that's voiced by an archeologist who um, can look at these hostile aliens and intuit from them what stage in the cycle of history their species is in and, uh, and can infer what modes of behavior and what modes of thought it is operating in, and in this way they can outclass, outpace, outsmart the aliens. I guess a couple of interesting ideas, but they get a lot of this, and overall I found the effect a little mediocre. I think this is another one that can be appreciated for its historical value, but I don't know that I'm that pumped to read more AEVV. Okay, thank you for watching. Another one soon.